One. This is uh, another tidbit uh, that Mike and I are doing. Uh, this is uh, based on the recent news of Joe Rogan exclusivity. So, as I'm sure everyone knows, Joe Rogan or the Joe Rogan Experience, as his show is called, his podcast is called, is very popular. Pro- I think it might be the most popular podcast, uh, as I've heard in the past, but it is an extremely popular podcast regardless. And he has an announcement to make about exclusivity. So, I'm just going to read this from the Joe Rogan verified Instagram account caption on this post. So I'm going to read this. Uh, In case it is edited, I'm recording this on Wednesday, the 20th of May. The year is 2020. (laughs) Star date, like whatever. Anyway. um, Okay. So I'm just going to read this announcement. The podcast is moving to Spotify starting on September 1st. The podcast will be available on Spotify um, as well as all platforms. And then at the end of the year, it will move move exclusively to Spotify, including the video version. It will remain free, and that's all in caps, free, and it will be the exact same show. It's just a licensing deal, so Spotify won't have any creative control over the show. They want me to just continue doing it the way I'm doing it right now. We will still have the clips up on YouTube, but full versions of the show will only be uh, will only be on Spotify after the end of the year. I'm excited to have the support of the largest audio platform in the world, and I hope you folks are there when we make the switch. So, I'm a big fan of Joe Rogan, the Joe Rogan Experience. Listen to him almost every day, and I kind of I cherry pick the episodes because some people, some guests, I just don't relate to, so I don't care, and I don't watch fighting, so I don't watch the MMA shows. So, full disclosure there. So I, I don't know. I really like the, I really like the Joe Rogan show. Uh, I know Mike has a different opinion on that, but what this tidbit is really about is this exclusivity idea, and the idea that podcasts used to be this thing where you'd go to host, whether it's yourself hosted or whatever you do. You have this RSS feed that's out in the world, and then these podcast apps go and clamor for these RSS feeds, and then everybody can use anything. So me having recently migrated, as I mentioned in our previous episode, to uh, Google Podcasts, having recently having recently migrated to that. You know, I, I have Joe Rogan obviously on there and I'm subscribed to him and I have a few other people that I'm subscribed to because I started anew. I didn't try to import anything or anything. I just started fresh. So now there's a disruption there. And I know that that's just like a UX thing. And I can, of course, download Spotify. And of course, it's free, but it's starting to get to the point where, number one, sort of, and a buddy told me this, but sort of, quote unquote, the man is take is getting getting involved with podcasts where podcasts were kind of untouched by quote unquote the man as as they say uh now it's sort of like the uh the people in suits are getting involved now and we're starting to see these exclusivity agreements and we're going to be like chat apps there's going to be I'm going to have like four apps by the end of this by the end of these exclusive exclusivity deals so I kind of want to get your opinion on this, Mike, and because we're podcasters, uh, you know, full disclosure, as you could probably already tell, this is not a web development tidbit. This is a purely a talk. Let's talk about the world of podcasting conversation. So, Mike, uh, take it away. Yeah, I have a lot to say on this topic because exclusivity has kind of been happening slowly in podcasts, and it all really started with. The fact that celebrities started to get really involved with podcasting. Um, Before that, it was regular people, regular like folks that just were a really good at talking publicly, uh, really had good good radio voices, good stories to tell, etc. Good audio equipment. It was just it was regular people that had sometimes had audiences, sometimes didn't. Now it's a mainstream platform. It's becoming a mainstream platform for a lot of different reasons, um, which is technically the evolution of every platform which is fine but the problem is is that it's being monetized and controlled just like all other platforms that's the way that's where it's going so this whole free aspect like he he put it in caps joe rogan put free in caps in my opinion that's also a temporary thing so i think the eventuality of podcasts and big podcasts like joe rogan's big podcasts like all the other ones is instead of going for free, they're going to be going behind paywalls, whether that be every episode or certain episodes behind paywalls. I don't know, but I honestly think that we're going to a point where we're going to have to be subscribing to Netflix for our videos. 
Amazon for our videos, Disney for our videos. Then we're going to have to be subscribing to Spotify for our music. And then eventually add on Spotify premium plus podcast support for our podcasts. So like, you, you think it'd be a, it'd even be a separate. I think they're going to try to, uh, they're going to monetize their monetized customers because at some, Spotify has a huge customer base that are paying. Spotify is big. Yeah, it's big. And Spotify has a huge customer base that space that's free. Their customer space that's paying is growing and growing and growing. At some point, they're going to want to monetize them even more. And I think they're seeing these podcasts and stuff as a way of doing that because a lot of podcasts, Gimlet Studios, for instance, they have a lot of, um, I don't know how to call this, but they have like Hollywood level production podcasts where they're actually telling stories, like fictional stories and sometimes written by Hollywood writers and, and directed by Hollywood directors. Right. So it's almost like a movie through a podcast and they're really good. But in my opinion, these kinds of things that require all this extra money and extra time to develop, that's leading to a, a closed garden experience. So we're going to have subscription to podcast shows that are kind of like produced just like these Gimlet podcasts. Uh, I'm trying to think of one off the top of my head, but for some reason I can't. I'll, I'll try to bring one up whenever Matt comes. Is an S Town Gimlet? Gimlet, but S Town is more of a again a detective show. I'm talking like full on fictional episodic reply all content. No, reply all again is like a regular radio podcast show. This is oh, different. I think I'm miss, I think I'm missing what you're. What, yeah, yeah, what, you're missing what, 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 what I'm categories. saying. It's it's like a full on fictional like storyline podcast where it's written and directed like like a movie and like a oh. show. Yeah, so they have voice actors playing different voices. There's like there's like, like that, that one where the guy's in space or something, and he does yeah. like the star dates or whatever. And yep, there's a space one. There's uh, there's there's a new one that they just released, which was kind of interesting about um, someone that some like regular mom getting into uh, scamming people through the phone. Oh and wow! The crazy shit that goes on after that. So there's there's a lot of them, and they're actually pretty good. Like I listen to them, but again, they're using like top tier actresses and actors and stuff like that sometimes like actual like a-list celebrities so they're in my opinion spotify is ramping it up to be a walled garden um and if even if it's not a walled garden they're still going to be ramping up the exclusivity so again when spotify goes up i guarantee you google is going to start doing something like this or a different platform maybe netflix is going to start producing podcasts to compete someone's going to do it so you're again like you're saying you're going to have to download so potentially subscribe to multiple podcast apps to listen to to all your favorite podcasts. And not only that, the other really big negative for me, and obviously directly it affects us, is that it's going to leave the regular podcast creators on the, by the wayside. Because this is, the, this is the same the same thing that happened on YouTube. Yep. Because it's going to get more mainstream. Before YouTube was mainstream, anyone could start up. You had quality content. You're good to go. Right now. You could be great at almost everything. You could do everything perfectly and you're still not guaranteed or not like most likely not going to build your audience correctly on YouTube, not the way it was built before. So before it was kind of like the wild west, which is awesome and something that we should be striving for really. There should, it should be allowed, like anyone should be able to pick it up and as long as they're talented and they're bringing their skills to the table, they should be able to build that audience right now. It's not really like that. It's mainly dominated by massive creators and their their algorithm is dominated to help that. Like it's it's directly like aligned to help people that already have audiences rather than help people that don't have audiences. So that's I think where podcasts are going, which is unfortunate. I don't it's kind of inevitable, unfortunately. So I'm not like I'm cynical about it, but I'm also accepting of it um, because I don't see a way around it. It's just how stuff progresses like how any media becomes it always becomes mainstream any media channel so i'm glad that we got into podcasting when we did because we're getting this experience but in my opinion this is a short-lived <laughs> a short-lived thing that might be controlled by the big media agencies and you know big hollywood studios and large companies like amazon and spotify and all that which is unfortunate I, I agree and disagree. I think that YouTube, for example, is kind of invaded by the clips of the previous night's late shows, for example, 
where the late shows are obviously popular. They're on television. They're, you know, they're on television. So they're popular. People are watching them. They're on for years and they renew the host when people retire and stuff like that. I get it. And so they do, you know, very clippable content, different interviews and different sections of interviews that go on to YouTube. And a lot of that stuff really does invade the platform. But as a bit of possible uh, positivity against Mike's point is YouTube originals don't haven't really taken off. I'm a YouTube premium subscriber and honestly there isn't I I think I I think I watched the first episode of Retro Tech with MKBHD and I think I watched years ago before I was even a subscriber the guy who I think Vsauce Michael uh, I, I can't remember his whole name now, but Vsauce Michael, I watched his first uh, like YouTube premium, or I think it was YouTube Red at the time show, because it was a free free trial or whatever, first episode. And I watched that. And that's that's my YouTube originals. Uh, they don't hit as hard as the Netflix originals do, certainly from that platform. And a lot of the stuff is still is still just people, H3 and stuff like that. I don't really follow these night sh- like these night shows and stuff like that like the late late shows i've never been a fan of them so maybe maybe i'm a little bit different whereas i can see if someone's a fan maybe they're just getting absolutely bombarded in the home screen and the suggested you know they should be watching tons of these clips if you watch a couple i'm sure it invades because i that's happened to me i'll watch a couple on a game or something and then all of a sudden all my suggested videos, all my things on my home screen are just a bunch of this stuff about this one random game, you know, that I just wanted to check out briefly. So I can, I I can imagine that there's an invasion of this big media, of course. Uh, But, you know, I, I will say that I'm in a, I'm in a podcast group and a podcast movement or something. I can't remember on Facebook. And there's a lot of people out there actually that I've never heard of. And probably a bunch of people, even in that group, haven't heard of. And they, they reflect their numbers. A bunch of them are full-time podcasters. And they have a whole bunch of an audience. Because there's a lot of people out there. There's a lot of people out there. And you don't need to be mainstream. Now what sucks is... Obviously when you download an app... And you look at the discovery feed... Joe Rogan's right there. Bam. He's right there. Well, he Or he, he will be for now. I suppose. And he's a mainstream podcaster, right? He grew to the point of which he's mainstream... And there's a bunch of other stuff too, a bunch of the NPR podcasts and a bunch of the Gimlet Media ones and stuff like that, where they show up if they're on that platform, bam, right at the right on the explore tab. And there's tons of podcasts out there that I know nothing about. I don't know the name of the people that do it. I don't know any of it. A, a, a good example would be I've listened to a couple of UX podcasts and stuff like that, and my discovery feeds still rarely they still they some they do a little bit but rarely do they show web development or ux podcasts it still shows the big ones and i think that is kind of what you're getting at mike where it's of course somebody can just start uploading their home videos on youtube of course somebody can become a comedian and and decide to go on youtube and start publishing stuff and they can get big like that dream still exists but it a lot of it is pushed aside or at least it makes climbing that ladder harder because the big guys that are on TV or the big celebrities that are in movies have these channels now. And then they're, you know, they're the thing that's suggested. They're the things that's recommended. And when talking about exclusivity and the subscription fees thing to kind of tackle what you said there, I can kind of see what you're saying. But I, what I'm getting the impression of is companies don't seem to be as greedy as they can online when they have you paying recurring, if that makes sense. So, for example, Netflix could realistically be charging an arm and a leg to me or to anyone else, obviously for watching their like they could have Netflix original plus but they don't and I feel like it's because they realize that if they piss off a big group of people they not only just lose me and they lose my eight or twelve or whatever it is dollars a month they lose my eight or twelve whatever it is dollars a month 
for potentially the rest of my life. Like it's, it's very possible that I'll have a Netflix subscription for the rest of my life. It's very possible. And they know that that's losing a lot. And they know that that's losing God knows how much merch. Like what if I'm a big fan of something, I will buy merch and they get a cut of it. And so there's still like that corporate greed, of course, where there's merch for sale and stuff like that. But even the little guys do that, right? It's just a way to monetize stuff. Like we're going to have stickers and stuff eventually, stuff like that. So we're going to have merch too. But I feel like Spotify wouldn't necessarily put another podcast subscription in. I could see them having a podcast subscription, but I could see it being cheaper than the music subscription. So it might be something like, I don't know, it's $10 a month for Spotify, but then it's only $5 a month for the podcast. And if you have the Spotify premium, it includes the podcast. So, you, you know, you if you have a premium subscription today and this new podcast tier comes out, you already have that. But if someone like me, who I don't care about the music side, just wants to have podcasts ad-free and all the rest of it, which I don't know whether they're ad-free on Spotify. I've never listened to a podcast on Spotify. Um, but let's just assume it's, let's just assume for the time being it's ad supported on Spotify, then, and, and I'm not a premium subscriber of which I'm not, then I could subscribe for less to the podcast side because there are podcasts that they didn't purchase on pot on like we're on Spotify. Like you might be listening to this on Spotify, right? So I think the main thing I guess I'm trying to get across to is I don't think that Spotify is evil for this. I think it just makes sense. You know, obviously, you know, we're on Spotify. They give us a bunch of listens too, like, or their, their listener base gives us a bunch of listens and that's totally fine. I downloaded already. I just, I already downloaded Spotify. Uh, so that when Joe Rogan goes into Spotify, then I'm just going to have the app and I'm just going to, I guess, get rid of him on Google podcasts of which like I hate this because I'm not going to like, should I switch apps? Like, you know what I mean? Like now it's a question again. Uh, but it's a whole UX thing again, but it's not like video games in which they can give you here, here's, here, here's a monetization plan of a video game. Here's a monetization plan. And then we can compare the monetization levels to a spot of, to a potential podcast scenario. Take Fallout 76. Okay. Love it or hate it. I don't care. I played a lot. That's fine. You have to buy the game. So whoever the intro the intro costs, and I bought the big edition because I'm a big Fallout fan, but regardless, let's just say, let's just say you pay the full retail price at launch in Canada, $79.99, which is $92, give or take, after tax. Can, again, Canadian dollars, okay? Everyone calm down. Now, you get into the game, and there's a premium currency called Atoms, and those Atoms can be spent in the Atomic Shop, and the Atomic Shop refreshes every Tuesday or something, whatever. It refreshes at a certain rate and there's items in there that are on sale. There's items that are in there that are timed exclusive that'll disappear. There's items that are in there that are like, the most of the timed exclusive stuff is uh, seasonal. So like they'll have like a you know Thanksgiving thing when it's near Thanksgiving and stuff like that. So they'll have all this time stuff. And there's actually a few things that like disappeared from the shop that I want now because I've seen it in action. So now I got to wait for it to come back and it'll probably come back in a limited sense. So you have that. You have that false urgency and you have like you can purchase atoms. Then you go into the game itself and you're playing the game, whatever. They also have to enhance your game and it's it's subjective as to how much it does, but they have a subscription called Fallout First that gives you some benefits that enhances your game to a certain degree. Uh, again, subjective amount, but it's approximately 17-ish dollars a month in Canada. So, and this is on PlayStation. So, PlayStation 4. So, now we're looking at, in terms of the levels of monetization, we're talking, you buy the game, you can buy currency called Atoms continually. There's false urgency to spend the Atoms, so it's not like, oh, I'll just buy that house later, because you can earn Atoms in the game via challenges and other things, and eventually Seasons, which is a new feature coming out. So, you know, there's... That, like, that's, that's what I'm trying to get at, is like, th- look at the levels of this, plus a subscription. So not only are you paying a subscription and you paid to start playing, now, the, and, and like, these are optional as well, it's an optional subscription, but now you have the option of getting, of, of paying for Atoms to get cool stuff, and so, assuming you're a person that wants to have the, the best and the biggest Fallout experience, Fallout 76 experience, you're paying for a subscription fee, which does give you some atoms. You're playing the game, which you can earn atoms in, you know, to their credit. But then you're also getting a store that refreshes every week or so. And in and in doing that, some of those items are timed exclusive. Some of them are bundled with other things. Some of them are on sale. Some of them are being removed. They're being vaulted. Some of them are coming out of the vault. Some of them are like, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you have that false urgency there. And then eventually when seasons come out, 
when seasons come out, now you have a timed, a time window in which you should play a, a certain amount in order to, in order to sort of quote unquote beat the season, get through the tiers. And by doing that, you're playing more, which incentivizes you to purchase more atoms and possibly buy the follow first subscription if you didn't buy it. So, so do you see what I'm saying? Like Spotify and them, like to, to take it out of gaming, Spotify and them don't have that. You know, I don't buy Spotify Premium and then buy Spotify Coin, which allows me to put it into a, a digital vending machine and or a digital jukebox and then have like my sound played. A lot of these other companies, like outside of gaming, okay, gaming seems to be particularly like monetized these days, right? And Fallout 76 is just one example. There's tons of examples like this, right? So I don't see the like what the way that you were saying, Mike, is it, it, it almost sounds like gaming level monetization to the podcast world. And I just don't see that happening and, or I don't see it working. I don't know if you agree with that. It could be like cable TV. You, back when cable was invented, you bought cable TV cause it had no commercials. And now what does cable TV have commercials? So, cause they slowly so, introduce them. Yeah. I think that they're going to keep trying to monetize everything they possibly can. And they're going to do it small increments to people, only new subscribers, stuff like that. Like, I think they're going to push slowly because you're right. They are very hesitant to anger massive quantities of people at once by increasing prices. But Netflix does have multiple tiers of subscription. They already do. Um, but it is for tech that, that didn't exist before. Like when the, when Netflix came out... Uh, as a streaming service, we're talking about, you know, we we're just hitting the HD levels and a lot of people still had tube TVs and such. Yep. And so we're talking about 4K is a new tech and does require really good internet. So does it make sense that you pay more for that? Probably. Like it kind of just to me, it's like, oh, okay, well, I mean, yeah. I mean, if they only did that, that would be fine. But they've also increased their prices, right, for their standard, for the right. standard subscription. So they did, they've increased their price for the standard subscription. They added new tiers. I mean, in I'm paying for the top tier because I have a, a few, like my family's on my Netflix. Oh, because you can you have more screens then, right? More screens at the same time, use 4K. I have a 4K TV, etc. So I have, a, there's a reason why I pay for the full tier. But it's just, I feel like I'm going to get nickel to dime to hell. Like I, I just, I already see it. Um, I was thinking about YouTube Premium recently because it's a really good way to support your like channels mm -hmm. i'm all about supporting like smaller channels and even larger like like you know individual uh youtube channels because i like the content that they make and i know it's a it's a pretty tough thing to do like making content like even us doing the podcast has made me appreciate the fact that people release you know daily videos or bi-weekly videos whatever but with such high quality so I want to support them as much as I possibly can. So that's why I turn off ad block most of the time. Um, I subscribe to some platforms, like some secondary platforms like Patreon or like Float Plane with Linus Media Group. But th that uh, type of stuff is nickel and dime in you. Going to, con going yes. to these damn services all the time. I mean, admittedly, yeah. we have a Patreon. You know, that kind of sounds hypocritical, but it's like yeah. that is the but stuff that nickel and dimes you. It's very optional. Like I don't, none of it requires me to do that. That's literally me wanting to do it and that's it. Which is a big, you know? which is a big thing. A the, big the thing, The fact exactly. that it is completely optional. 100% right. optional. It's literally like a donation. That's all it is. Because you're not, it's not like you're getting, getting a better parts. show. It's not like you're getting I'm a better not. podcast for subscribing, right? No, exactly. I'm just, I'm just literally using it as a way to support them, uh, which I'm fine with. But when, as soon as they start, as soon as we got more nickel and dime for every little thing that every little piece of entertainment go back to the cable tv strategy i'm just gonna be watching less content like i'm just gonna be doing less things yeah, yeah in my yeah, opinion yeah. which sucks and i'm gonna be limited in what i can watch and what i can do and stuff like that piracy might come back like a lot bigger and a lot more uh they might have to fight that so there's gonna be a big fight with pirates again and all like not that it's stopped at any time but it's just I, and I don't, the, the crazy thing is I don't have a better way of doing this. Like I don't, I can't propose, you know, and I can't be angry at Spotify for, you know, taking these podcasts and making them exclusive. Like Joe Rogan's is number one in the world. I can't be angry at Spotify for trying to corner that market because it's a smart market to corner. 
Yeah, like if they didn't do it, a, somebody else would have, you know. In a business – exactly. In a business sense, it makes sense. Spotify is not an evil company, like in my opinion. Uh, they're they're doing – like th- they could have done it a better way. Um, I don't know how, but they could have done it a better way regardless. I, I can't believe but, that he wasn't on there to begin with. Like I looked him up already because I thought – I know he are, I know what his, what his quote said and he said he would be on there shortly. But I yeah. remember looking because I downloaded Spotify and I was like, oh, I'll just subscribe to him on here now to get used to it. And he's not on there. No. <laughs> like I just – weird. Like we're on there. Like what's going on here? Yeah, I don't know why he wasn't on there. But it might have, it might have been because of that whole situation with Spotify before where they weren't just taking RSS feeds. And they, you had to su- apply to them separately. Or get chosen, I think, or something. Something, something like, like that. that. Yeah, something like that. But regardless, that's probably what, that's probably why he wasn't on there at this point because he didn't care. But Spotify is a huge market. Um, so it makes sense. The other problem with Spotify having exclusive podcasts is that their podcast playing experience isn't very good. Oh, I don't I've never like, tried I don't, it, like I said. Yeah, so I don't like the fact that they mix their music and Spotify and, and podcasts. So, for instance, if you're listening to a podcast in, in Spotify and you finish that podcast, it's not going to play the next episode unless you put that in the queue. It's going to play a random song. I don't like that. I don't need that. Yeah, that sucks. It's going to play a random song that has nothing to do with that podcast or anything. So, you're going to have to go into the to the app and play the next episode or whatever. Like, so it... It has annoying little things like that. The, the podcast discovery feed or just getting to your podcast requires extra clicks because not like you're getting into a music app and then you have to get into the podcast section of that music app. I could see them spinning out an the app, podcast. though. If they're, if, if, if they're getting this serious, I could see them spinning it out and just having the same login for both. To be honest, I wouldn't mind that. As, as contradictory as it is for me to have to multiple apps, but I like it when my apps have different uses. So, for instance, messaging. I don't like having multiple messaging apps because they all do the goddamn same goddamn thing. Oh, yeah. So that's why I, I hate messaging apps. But with podcasts and music, I'd rather have two separate apps because podcasts has different functionality than music. Like it, I have it's different... like YouTube versus YouTube music. It make it just it literally makes sense. There is a line there. Absolutely, one hundred percent, and I, I agree with that. And there's a, a bunch of different features. Like for instance, with podcasts, when you're driving. And you're listening to a podcast. What you wanted to do, and most apps can handle this, is to po- like whenever navigation comes on and tells you turn left at the next turn, pause the podcast and then start it after that after that sentence. What Spotify does is what they just handle it like it's music, so they just make the podcast super super uh, quiet, and so you don't hear what they're saying while the navigation is talking. Oh my my Galaxy Buds do that with uh, it'll tell me what app what I got a notification in. Yeah. But like it's just most podcast apps know to pause the podcast instead of making it quiet. Because you, you have to hear the damn thing. You have to hear the damn thing. Like music, yes, you can make the music quiet. It's not that important if you it's miss like a, a radio. Of it's lyrics. like the radio thing. Like whatever. Who cares? So it's stuff like that. Like it's just not designed for podcasts. So you're right. If they create a podcast app, it'll be a lot better. Um, I'll be happy to use Spotify podcasts, but I'm not listening to Joe Rogan. I don't like. I never listened to Joe Rogan. I was thinking about starting to listen to it. Uh, I've watched clips and stuff like that here and there, the popular ones. I just, I have a problem with him giving a platform for, it's on the one hand great, like he allows anyone to go on there and talk about their stuff, uh, regardless of, you know, back like scientific information or whatever. But I don't like I don't like that he gives a platform for kooks to talk about it, like people that are dangerous, like people talking about stuff that's dangerous for people to think about, and could it's essentially like creating cults. Like a lot of the a lot of the people that come on his platform have created cults after that, like flat earthers and stuff like that. Like that's created issues in society because he allowed them to go on there. Didn't they exist before his show? Like I, I don't, did, I don't know they, anything about this side of things. No, to but be honest. they they hundred percent did, but he made them way bigger. Oh, like and way more people. You're, you're saying that you that. don't like the fact that there's people out there that have that are getting a platform that you don't think like should have a platform, kind of thing. Like, or yes. they shouldn't be getting a non endorsed show out because you're yes. on his show. Yes, it's not endorsed, and he he sometimes con- like he sometimes challenges them, but I don't think he challenges them enough. That's another topic. I like uh, see the thing is is I I like that though because number one I I I do piece I do piecemeal Joe Rogan I. I've I've heard enough talk from freaking stand up comedians. Like if there's a stand up comedian on Joe Rogan, I don't freaking watch it for the most part. It's like okay, thank you. Like I just I've heard enough from them. I don't I, I'm not a fan of of watching stand up all that much, and so I don't know who these people are. 
and most of them are talking about their careers and writing jokes, and it just doesn't it just doesn't jive with me. Like just, that's it. But I like the fact that that podcasts are like a minefield like that, where it's anyone talks about anything, and I'll listen to. I was gonna write an article years ago, uh, but I didn't on Medium, uh, and I was gonna talk about how like I was learning crazy crap, like I was learning about plants one time, and then it all of a sudden switched to like architecture or something, and two mm-hmm. things that I like I don't know anything about plants or architecture, like I don't know what the hell's going on, but but because I was listening, I think it may have been Joe Rogan or maybe Joe Rogan and a couple other podcasts, whatever, but the fact that the podcasts are just they're all over the place, and they're just in my one queue that I that that's the way I looked at it. Um, I, it's entertaining. It's entertaining to hear these crazy people talk about crazy things, right? Like that's why he does it because it's fun. It's it's interesting to talk about. Like it's interesting to hear people's crazy opinions on like facts. But the problem is, and again, I, I, I always, I'm always conflicted with this because I do like the open how how open he is about having guests on, regardless of political whatever, regardless of what they like, you know all spectrums he has all spectrums of guests on there he's very non-biased like it's extreme non-biased which is great but my problem is is that his audience is so big and there's just so many uh gullible people out there people that just don't know any better that he just gives way too much credit to these crazy theories that have absolutely no scientific proof that have absolutely no backing of anything whatsoever that are more harmful than good for people well, that are way too. I gullible. mean, technically, all that is technically subjective. Absolutely. Well, not all of it. Like flat Earth is not subjective. I don't know if that. I don't know what that's hurting though. Like personally, I don't really look into it, but I just don't know what that's hurting. Like, do I believe that the Earth is flat? No, but I also don't. If you were telling me the Earth was flat, I'd be like, okay. But then I would just from that, I'd be like, okay, like he thinks the Earth's flat. You know what I mean? Like, like I'm just that generic when it comes to a podcast i'm just sort of like well that guy thinks that okay yeah i guess yeah that's true that's i mean that's how i handle those kinds of situations too i just ignore them i just think like and it wouldn't change too much either i don't know i'm I'm always always back back and forth on this someone somebody else will interview but not with that that big of a platform that's a thing like that's my that's always been my issue is that his platform is just way like it's again he's number one like he's the number one podcast. He, so if he is because I, I said he I thought he was. No, so he, he is actually he is number the one. number one podcast. Yeah, he absolutely is the number one podcast. So the but, thing the thing is is, is yeah. I I actually have a problem with that statement. Before you go on, there is I I've always had this problem with oh your platform is so big now now you have a responsibility and I get it like I certainly get that that statement where you're actually influencing a bunch of people and they might follow what you say. But I've always thought to myself, you know, the creative part of making a podcast or having a YouTube channel, whatever it is that gained you that audience, that creative part hasn't changed, probably, or it's changed with you. And the content you've been creating all along has been a reflection of what you wanted to create. And so why is it now that you're big and people can fight me on this, but like, why is it now that you're big that you need to act differently? I've never really grasped with that i get it because like obviously really if tough. you if, if if someone bought us out if spotify you know if spotify bought us out somehow if they just bought us out and then we used their studio or some, you know just some crazy out of their scenario in which we were only on spotify and you know they gave us a studio and better mics and better this and better that we wouldn't break a headline because we're small whereas he's breaking headlines and you know people are writing about him and talking about him like we're talking about him right yeah so, it's a bad precedent, but it's an inevitable precedent. Like I, it's not like I didn't think this was going to happen. That's the issue. I didn't think. I honestly never even considered this. It was either going to be him or someone else. You know what I mean? Like it was going to be some other big podcast was going to go exclusive. There's already kind of exclusive podcasts. Even Gimlet, um, they don't have exclusive podcasts, but they launch a lot of their podcasts earlier on Spotify. And See, stuff like that, stuff like market. that, even though like that stuff's fine to me. Like I know some people get really bent out of shape, but I, I'm I'm weird with internet content. I've never been a person that's like I have to watch these videos the instant they come out. I've never like very 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 rarely is a creator is a creator of any kind uh, important enough to me so that I have to watch their stuff the instant it comes out. Typically, I will wait a bit or put it into my queue or whatever. 
And, and so if it comes out on my podcast app later, then I'm like, okay, you know, short of it being something ridiculous, like three years, you know, mm-hmm. then I don't care. You know, there's, there's a, there's a bunch of H3 podcasts that I'm behind on and I'll just, I don't know, I'll watch them later. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. like it's just that, that's, that's, that's it to me. I, I don't want to run out of leisurely media to listen to. And therefore I'm fine with having a backlog. Yeah. I have a backlog too. So I'm, I'm in the same boat there. I'm not a huge, I don't have a huge problem with time exclusives. Um, now it's exclusive, exclusive, so it's a little bit more of a pain. Again, if Spotify solves the podcast listening experience, it won't be that big of a deal to me. Yeah, like the precedent that's, it sets sucks. Huge that they got the number one. They got the number like, one. That's yeah. massive. Like that's so big. Like there's a, okay, so it won't even be really... on Apple Podcasts. Like think about think about how crazy that is. No, yeah, it's huge. That's crazy, right? Like that is crazy. So. There's a really interesting series of podcasts that Gimlet released on, I think, their startup channel uh, about their acquisition by Spotify. Like, they actually released... Oh, they were actually it was, acquired. It, they were full-on acquired. It was like a five or six episodes on the whole process. So, before the acquisition, what they were feeling during the acquisition, like during the actual process of the talks and after... It was really interesting what Spotify think thought of podcasts. This was like a few years ago or like a year ago, a year and a half ago, something like that. Like they weren't acquired that long ago, but Spotify went big on podcasts. They were like in one of the, in one of the situations, the creator of Gimlet and the, and the creator of Spotify were both sitting in a room and they were talking like this is before the acquisition. And the creator of Spotify was like, you need to start thinking differently about podcasts, like how you're doing it. You need to start thinking like, like how much money you're like, you know, Instead of thinking like you know, shoestring budget, what are you going to do with that shoestring budget? And he threw this number at him. He's like, what are you going to do with a billion dollars? Holy frick. And like that was the – and the the creator of Gimma was like, I, I couldn't answer. Like that question was extremely difficult. Like I, I answered it poorly. Like he knew, he knew he answered it poorly because like he couldn't. Like, that, wasn't even, that wasn't even – that wasn't even a con- – yeah, it was a super interesting conversation. Wait a second. But that- Gimlet, things are on other platforms though. Yes, everything's on other platforms. Damn. Everything it so wasn't. They, it's not an exclusive. They buy, took Joe Rogan and they freaking made him exclusive. Damn. Yes, they couldn't that just was a take him. Conversation. Gimlet. I'm pretty sure Gimlet was offered exclusivity, but they turned it down. Like they want to be on all the platforms. They're pretty. They're pretty uh, adamant about that. But I don't like. I don't see that lasting very long. Like once you know, like Joe Rogan went. I'm sure in a year Gimlet will be fully. Exclusive Although it, it is, although well. clearly, like he even said it, it is a licensing deal. They didn't literally buy Joe Rogan. You know, they didn't no, buy yeah, the person's they, company, yeah. like whatever his company is called. You know, and Gimlet was bought. This was a different. It's not a licensing deal, right? Like Gimlet is literally owned by Spotify now, so they could do it any time if they really wanted to, I believe. But regardless, it might be in their contract that they don't for a couple of years, and then they will. Who knows? But anyway, that was a really interesting perspective, and that's why, like, I knew that Spotify was big on podcasts, and they're going to start doing stuff like this. Like, like when you're a billion dollars, like, what are you going to do on a podcast for a billion dollars? And the other, the other side of it is, how is a podcast going to make you a billion dollars? I mean, a bunch of them will. A bunch of them put all together, yeah. A bunch of them put all together, but like, like again, they they're going to have to drive subscribers. But then, not only drive subscribers, they're going to have to drive ad agencies. Right, right, like, stuff like that. So, I'm a little bit disappointed that it happened already, but I'm not surprised. I, um, I will I'm, say, like, I'll would would you would you subscribe to a podcast? See, the thing is, is, right now I'm trying to find a free podcast app, which is why I left Castbox. But uh, among other reasons, which I said in the previous episode, but uh, I would would be more down to say, okay, I have a podcast subscription, and I would be Spotify maybe if they had like a podcast tier. But I'll say there's already podcast podcast subscriptions like Iron Wolf has podcast subscriptions so that you don't have to or Earwolf, whatever it's called. Uh, so you don't Castbox have to pay, has one, too, for the app. Yeah. yeah. So you don't have to listen to ads, the, like even in roll ads. The thing. Well, yeah, I think that I don't know whether the Castbox, the Castbox ones for the app. So the in app ads. Right. Um, but I would be OK with it, but it would be the same situation of people are telling me to watch a bunch of stuff that's on Crave and I don't have Crave, so I just don't watch it. Yeah, exactly. Which sucks because that's, that's, that's not what's going to happen. That's not how podcasts have been. Yeah, I mean, there is a scenario where the open podcast platform will remain and remain relevant, as well as the closed podcast platform will remain relevant. I hope that that's the case because both have advantages. Again, 
Uh, I was going to tell you the the names of those shows that are really well produced on Gimlet. Uh, Mother Hacker is one of them. Um, anyway, there's there's more. Sandra, Sandra is a good one. Uh, and there's one there's one more. I can't remember it now. But regardless, they're good shows. Like they're legitimate. Like you're watching TV kind of shows. And I can see how those can require a lot more money. Again, those are the ones that you're talking about. Like, how much, how are you going to spend a billion dollars on a podcast? Yeah, yeah. That's how you spend a billion dollars. production value and writers. A-list and- cast, A-list writers, create really awesome content. I'm not going to say I'm not going to pay for that. Because if, you're, if I'm going to be doing a lot of driving at some point, that's that's the way I kind of kill the drive for me. Right. Or if I need to do a lot of traveling, it, it, it helps with my anxiety when I travel and fly and stuff like that. I listen to podcasts. It really helps me. So I I see value in that. I'm probably going to pay for those kinds of things. Because sometimes I just it, it's tough for me to even look at a screen when I'm flying. But tough uh, to look at a screen. Yeah. Like sometimes I just get into this thing where I just like so – I hate being in, on the plane so much that I'll just like you know sit back, close my eyes and just listen to something. And that will relax me a little bit better. Whereas looking at a screen sometimes just, you know, increases my eye strain, whatever. It's it, it's different. But I don't know. It's an interesting world. I hope that the open podcast platform remains, RSS feeds, all that. And maybe we have some premium podcasts that are really well produced. Like these better be freaking awesome if, if it ever comes to that. That's kind of where I'll leave it, I think, because we're already getting into the 40-minute territory for a tidbit. I mean, that kind of seems like why, well, this is exactly why we spun it out, to be honest, because yeah. it's it's not web dev related, but it is our field, our medium, whatever related. So, yeah, I, I would say that um, I'm excited, actually, to see where podcasts go, but yeah. it is very easy to become, it is very easy to become cynical because of the monetization we've seen in other mediums like games or even other other mediums like like Netflix's price increasing and stuff like that. So it, it's very easy to become cynical that way. Mm-hmm. But I will say that having just shopped for a podcast app, I'm kind of ready for like a really big dive into it. And I don't like a lot of money and a big company going into it. And I'm sorry, but Google Podcasts ain't it. I don't think it, I think it's great. I think there's a lot of great features on there. I'm using it actively, but I just feel like it's not an app that was necessarily made by a multi million, if not billion dollar team. Well, I guess the team wouldn't be billions, but it wasn't made by Alphabet, a really big tech company, right? It wasn't made by, uh, it feels just like an app that was made. That's just good. <laughs> you know what I mean? It just feels like, it feels like you and I could make Google podcasts, uh, whether no I'm being, naive or whatever maybe but you're not it just feels like that and so i'm ready for someone to say okay let's make this really good and maybe then i'll have the all the the podcast app that i want and i know that some people are going to be saying why don't you use apple podcast well i don't have an apple phone i don't have an iphone and uh, i'm not doing that so that's it for that but yeah I don't know. That's my that's my closing thing. I still enjoy the Joe Rogan show and have already preemptively downloaded Spotify to listen to it, uh, which is even though it's starting September first, I believe it was said. So I mean, let me just make sure that's right, <laughs> so that we don't spread misinformation. Uh, where does it even say this? Oh yeah, starting on September first, the podcast will be available on Spotify, etc. So. Anyway, yeah. So, I mean, that's kind of it. I, I never know how to end these damn tidbits. Th- these damn tidbits. Uh, to be I honest, I think that's the best way to end it. Just you angrily saying, "I never know how to end it. I never know how to end this thing. This is bullshit." How do you end I mean, these just things? Cut it. Cut it immediately. There. That's pretty good. Anyway, peace. Yeah.